Wherever I want to go, our feet shall take us there. This is Kason Demwenda, the president for the Economic Freedom Fighters. And today we have finally taken the long journey to the Kariba Dam. So we are right here in Kariba at the Kariba Dam War. It's been a long journey. We started off at five. Finally, we made it by nine. And now we have been inspecting and gathering information so that we can ascertain if there is real justification for these power blackouts, the load shedding that we are seeing that has encumbered us, especially after we are promised that we will not have them. The information that the media has propagated, especially through the government channels, is that there is no water. In the background here, what you see, this is the side of the trapped water of this big, magnificent dam, the Kariba. This is not a small dam. This is the world's biggest man-made um, dam, and uh, it's doing its job. I have been here several times. It is low, but not as low as it is being speculated. I've seen it lower than this, but what we have today is quite a lot of water, which is still there, and the generation is still happening. Of course, there has been some reduction in general generation, but there is still generation. Let me just give you a little more peek. This is the side of the dam where the water is trapped. There are a lot of construction works that are happening to increase generation, definitely. And we have been seeing this is a side that actually has not been publicized by a lot of people, probably to give an impression that it's just now a dry hole. No, it's not a dry hole. There is water. It may not be a lot, but there is water for generation. The part that has unfortunately become very popular uh, by people trying to show that there is a total dry out is this other side where the water falls off. And we have seen this on the side. We are actually capturing this from the Zimbabwean side. So what we are overlooking is actually the Zambian side. So where the water is coming out from down there, the turbines, that's where they are, and that's where generation happens, and water continues on this other side. Just for us to have perspective of what happens uh, at this um, power generation, you know, Zambia is a big country which is upcoming. And uh, the Kariba Dam is just one of the places, the North Bank, which we share with um, Zimbabwe, our neighbors and our brothers and sisters. We understand that at peak, Zambia uh, generates uh, in excess of 3,456 megawatts. 3,456 megawatts. And our local demand, the amount that we use at Zambia, is just 2,300 megawatts. That gives us an excess of 1,000 146 megawatts this surplus is what we use to export to other countries those which don't have and among the countries where we export there is um zimbabwe we also export to the drc to namibia and to Botswana. of course the generation at this place where i am um this is uh, the kariba north bank is um is about um uh, 360 megawatts the kafiwe gorge on the other side there generates about 600 megawatts the mamba coteries which is a co-plant uh, generates uh, gives us um, about uh, 300 megawatts um, and uh, if we look at our past history we have actually been exporting an excess of just about 40 400 uh, 440 megawatts now this uh, cause us to start rethinking and understanding, especially we want to challenge the incumbent president, <laughs> President Hakainde Echilema. Our understanding is that um, energy is uh, the lifeline of every country, and if we have to uh, develop a Zambia, we should have energy. Our fear is that if we prioritize exportation so that we earn an income, we are going to kill the local industry. Such that even when we have made the same money that we are craving for, we would have killed our own people's enterprise. And the country can never be developed by foreigners if the locals are not involved. So I'm challenging the government. Let us prioritize the people of Zambia. Let us make them be productive. Give us electricity, not 12 hours. That is an abuse of authority, my brother. President Hakainde Echilema. Let us have something. We are failing to work. I'm an architect. I'm supposed to be drawing this time. There is no power at my office. There is no power at home. Um, there are people who are working in barbershops, saloons. 
Yesterday when we went to buy some relish with my wife, we went to Zambif. Zambif has, with immediate effect, increased all prices of their foodstuffs by more than five kwacha. They are saying they have to refrigerate those things and they are using gensets. And those gensets are, um, are increasing the cost. So everything is going up, meaning even our productivity is going down. If we are to have a future as a country, let us prioritize the local enterprise. Let us make sure that our people are not deprived excessively. The other thing I would challenge my brother, the president, is um, that um, let us have truthful communication. If Zambia, with all its abundant resources, was given ample communication so that people are able to plan, communicate, come up with a schedule, not that which is exploitative, but one that leaves people with opportunity to work. If you can cut even the load shed to something sustainable, you can be cutting even maximum of four hours. Twelve hours is killing the people. It is shutting down the economy. And once you shut it beyond redemption, we will not recover. See how our culture is already plummeting. These are consequences. Already we are coming from low productivity. So I would challenge this government. We are here at the Kariba of course, the water has reduced. If, if anything, if we have to go into details, the understanding is that the water, which actually was the previous days when it had reduced to even 75.65, uh, 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 it has now actually improved. The past three days, I've noticed it has increased to 75.68 um, uh, for the last two, three days, meaning that it has stopped going down. It's rain season, water is coming in. So I would challenge this government. Let it provide for the people first. The people of Zambia should be put first. I know this is part of the conditionalities that are emanating from the IMF. I know President Hakainde Chilema is not happy, but unfortunately, those deals he has gone, he has signed with the IMF where they are dictating how we should earn, how we should uh, use our own resources. It's very unfortunate. So I'm challenging President Hakainde Chilema. Revisit the IMF. They will crush this country. We have been there to them before. They have crushed our country. Kaunda chased them. Chiruba chased them. Manawasa chased them. It's only that at the end, after we chased them, we negotiated and were able to write off for us to have that hippie. So we are coming from a place where we have worked with the IMF and we know how they engulf a country, strip it of its productivity and let you only live to fulfill that which you have borrowed from them. Let us make sure we do not end up there where our country is totally destroyed. And also one thing I'd want to challenge the president. Youths were promised a lot of jobs. There are over 5 million youths who are unemployed right now. Those uh, little uh, droplets in the water of 40,000 that you're talking about is not helping much. Most of the youths are self-employed. They are hustling and working on their own. This means that their livelihood right now are being cut off completely. Do you want them to become criminals? If you load shed them the whole day, what do you expect them to be doing right now? What do you think the youths are doing right now? They are becoming criminals. They are losing out. What do you think is happening to those people that are doing businesses? So we have caused this disruption. That speech that you sent, Mr. President, yesterday saying you acknowledged uh, disruption. Don't even acknowledge. You have to reform. This is not a minor disruption. This is a huge disruption, which is devastative. People will start dying. So we are challenging you. In that speech you gave, it was empty. There was no guideline when electricity is coming back. There was no guideline on what really you are doing. It was just so empty. And we need to be getting assurance from you as the head of state. So as economic freedom fighters, we are making sure that you fulfill the promises, especially as empowering the people so that they can self-develop. This reliance on the West, borrowing, will keep borrowing, borrowing, and will be sinking deeper. It cannot work. Development is earned by the people themselves working hard. This total reliance. So you see, we borrowed a little from the IMF, but the loss that we are incurring every day as a result, um, as a result of um, this load shed, will soon surpass even that little money we borrowed. Let us move steadily as a country. Let us be patriotic and let's make sure that the decisions we are making are in the interest of the country, especially the youth. They are the backbone of development. If you have seen even in your appointments, you have left out the youth. All the PSA just accept a few drop here and there. The youth are still languishing in the streets. And with this introduction of this Lord Shed, the youth are literally dying. They are literally dying as our on the ground.
already the farming has failed so they were hoping some of them have started popcorn machines i passed through some place now they end up just um, planting that popcorn and fortunately they don't even have fertilizer so this is a time we call mr president revise that schedule it is not a reflection i know the imf has taken power from you they are dictating what should be done that's not how to run a country the people of zambia voted for you and it is you they voted those deals you are even failing to disclose if i'm lying make public the imf conditionalities make public so that people can see because some of us have an understanding and we know you have compromised by those documents you have compromised you have also compromised on the uh, value chain minerals the next generation minerals for the av batteries we are aware you have compromised you have given the rights for the future to the u.s in the value chain we are just spectators we have got a nickel mine the biggest in the in africa and yet there there is even no industry coming up for value addition you talked about 700 jobs what is 700 jobs against five million unemployed youths so we are challenging you mr president this is a mandate that has been given to you wholeheartedly by the people of zambia and it is up to you to seize the opportunity and serve the people prudently it takes a leader that is firm for this country to move i also take this opportunity to remind you that there is no one who gets everything perfect at the first touch that's the water there is a lot of water this side which is being popularized as it has dried is not true we have seen you have made appointments you appointed those ministers we do not expect those ministers to be perfect what you should have been doing should have been moving those who are underperforming but you keep defending 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 even mediocrity we tell you there are no medicines in the hospital you keep defending you are not uh, elected to be a defender you are elected to be a vision carrier a representative of the voice of the people of zambia it doesn't mean when you're in power you stop listening keep listening mr president this country is relying on you to guide it we are coming from a bad place unfortunately we are sinking even deeper i'm challenging the youth let us work hard let us emancipate ourselves let us be patriotic to this country let us do everything let us not give up it is not the end of the road let us not be lazy but all above all let us also be preparing for a life beyond the incumbent president one day president akanje chile mazdenya will end it will now be a time for the youth to take over each generation should choose its own leaders to preside over the affairs so i'm challenging the youth be involved in the things that are happening in this country be part of the solution be part of the politics so that together we can move an agenda of self-emancipation using our local resources we are an endowed country but our mentality has been one that keeps pulling us down because we believe too much in what others do but we fail to believe in our own ability so i'm challenging the youth especially let us be bold you can join economic freedom fighters this is a party for the youth we are objective we are moving around the country moving consciously the youth realizing that we also have a role if this country is to see development we are here at the kariba dam you are there where you are let's keep talking issues let's keep advising the president and let's keep marching strong because this country depends on us let me also give you another look right now that's the side this is the zimbabwean side on this side and then this side is um um the zambian side this is although this whole place in where we are is um a no man's land and you can also be bringing your families here for tourism all these are uh, things that are a wonder this is one of the wonders of the world there is no bigger dam you find in the world than this and it's in zambia and you haven't been here so bring your family here come and see educate them so that they can know the greatness of zambia it's because sometimes we do not equip our own people that's why they grow up thinking zambia is so underprivileged this country has got money in excess if we can just be serious believe in ourselves work hard avoid being compromised my big brother hakainde chilema made mistake the moment he became president he rushed to compromise himself the west can never develop us china can never develop us those are partners in development and we should be meeting them as equals work with them as equals not to give them the rights they would as long as they are developing they would not need to see us develop because we are the suppliers of raw materials so it is just common logic that the west cannot make sure africa develops when did we get independence almost uh, 59 years why haven't they made even a single african country develop 
Why are we all still fed wild? It's deliberate. It's competition. Techimbuya. If we develop, where will they get the natural resources? So we shouldn't take it with child's gloves, thinking the ways to come and hand the development to us, it will never work. Emancipation is self fought for. You have to fight for it. You need to work. You need to awaken. You need to be patriotic. You need to be sovereign. Unfortunately, our president, I have a problem. I like him as a person, but he is so compromised. He's so weak. He can't even fire his own minister. He can't even chase him. My president, you have those powers mandated to you by the, the constitution. Crack the whip. Let people see that you are the one they voted for and you can deliver. We keep telling you about medicines you can't act. Now they're even lying to you probably about even the Kariba. Take a trip, come and see for yourselves. Come and interview the engineers on site like we are doing. Get facts also on the ground directly. Because people are misleading you, Mr. President. They are making the people suffer. People who you, are, you, you, you promised to uplift out of poverty. So take a walk, Mr. President. Move away from where you are. Move across the country. Get the things first hand. And you will see that we are missing out as a people to develop substantially. So this is where we are. It has taken us to come here. I know you can come here even with a helicopter. And come and verify if what we are telling you is a lie. Instead of uh, people lying to you for whatever reasons. I also take this opportunity to remind you, Mr. President, the road that leads to this place is very bad. The Siavonga road is bad. It needs attention. We still pay fit, uh, tough fees, but uh, we don't know where that money is coming. We are, we are waiting for that change. Uh, it's 2023. We need to start seeing that change, Mr. President. This is the side where the water comes from. I could have taken you closer there, but they are doing rehabilitation, so we are not allowed to get there. But this is the side where the water is coming. It's an infinite. This is the biggest man-made uh, dam. It goes all the way. There is water. And the rate at which it is moving, it is not bad. In the past three days, this has been filling up because of the rains. It's now at 75.68 for the past three days. Probably today I haven't checked. It could even be at uh, 75.69. So there is no need to starve our people. 12 hours, that's abuse of authority. Even if you have got the powers to do that, <laughs> that is not right. The same way you said that it's unacceptable. It is still unacceptable even now. Please don't force us to start organizing to vote against you by 2026 because we have no choice we can't continue like this you can't even give us the deadline of when this same load shedding is ending it's 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 it's, it's an understandable you can't sacrifice your own people by exports for even a natural survivor you know in a bailout finish at some country it hasn't done much so giving power to the imf to be dictating what you should do mr president that one is a no no and we are challenging you Please rescind this decision. Let the people have electricity. Let the people develop on their own. You won't employ them. Stop even singing about the 40,000. There are too many people who are unemployed in this country. And you singing, saying you have created employment, that should not even uh, be a thing you should be talking about. You haven't created employment. We are still a lot of employed people. And this crisis will crush people. I keep echoing this. If you don't rescind this decision, Mr. President, you are killing people. Even in hospitals, I was listening to news, I'm hearing now even drugs in hospitals are going to waste because some of them are vaccines and they need to be constantly refrigerated. Medicines are getting destroyed in hospitals. Medicines are getting destroyed in hospitals because there are no gensets in those hospitals. I hear even bodies now are getting spoiled in mortuaries. Mr. President, 12 hours is not practical. It is an insult to an intelligentsia like you. So please rescind it. You shouldn't have even contemplated 12 hours is abuse. So I'm challenging you as a man, as a fellow man, please reconsider this. You are killing our people. 12 hours they can't handle, they can't take. Even you, you can't take. Because you, some of you don't know what this means because you have got money, you have got gensets, and you are living off government taxpayers. Some of us who don't get paid by government, we are feeling the pinch of this. I can't even work. I can't even meet my deadlines because there's no power and don't think people will change and start doing other things people have tried things things have failed some of them finally they had something to do 
some of them I met Balish Chakwa this particular chips. They can't do that. Some had started welding. They can't do that. So what do you think people are eating? And most people in Zambia are hand to mouth. They make money today, they take that money instantly. But as things are right now, people are starving. And you are sending people to their early graves. So that's that. We are at Kariba Dam. And uh, we thought we should update you that we have water. It could not be in excess, but this is water that is generating electricity. And we have electricity to satiate the local demand. But we are having this crisis because we are busy selling electricity at the expense of our people. At peak, as a country, we only use 3,456. Well, we only, at peak, we only use 2,300 megawatts. And yet we produce an excess of 3,456. Of course, we are not producing uh, 346. But the amount that we are producing is more than enough that this country requires. So it's a challenge, Mr. President. Us will keep reminding you because it's our duty. And it is up to you to listen and to do that which is right because you have voted for that. This is Kasonde Mwenda. Wherever I want to go, our future will take us there. We have the hope that refuses to die. And we believe that one day, Zambia will be great.